In this tutorial, we will acquire urban data for GrassGIS. We will be acquiring data for the park Governor's Island in New York City. This park has been designed by the landscape architecture firm Field Operations. GIS data for it is available at gis.ny.gov and New York City's Open Data Portal. To find GIS data for your project, I suggest you see my geospatial data sources list. This includes extensive list of data of many different types. You can follow along this tutorial at baharman.github.io. The data for New York City that you can download includes a digital elevation model, a DEM that represents the surface of the Earth, a digital surface model, a DSM, that represents the surface of the Earth and everything on top of it, including trees and other plants and buildings. Land cover and imagery. There is imagery from 2012, 2014, 2016, and 2018 that clearly shows the development and construction of the park. There's also shoreline data, pavements, and buildings as vector data sets. Without further ado, let's go ahead and download this data. Go to gis.ny.gov to download the New York City topobathymetric data. We're interested today in the digital elevation model and the digital surface model. First of all, click on the 2017 DM. This will take you to the FTP site. Because there's a lot of data, it's been divided into tiles for easy download. We're interested in tile 20. Here you see bare earth elevation, New York City, tile20.geotiff. Download that. Then download the 2017 DSM, Digital Surface Model. Again, look for Tile 20. And here you want highest hit, New York City, Tile20.tiff. Highest hit refers to the first return of the LiDAR pulse. This data was captured by airborne LiDAR by an airplane with a laser scanner mounted on it, and the laser beams hit the ground and bounce back, and the position of the ground is recorded based on the time it takes the light to return to the sensor. In addition to the topobathymetric data, we'd also like shoreline data. Now, let's download shoreline data for New York City. Go to the NYC Open Data Portal at opendata.cityofnewyork.us and type a search for shoreline. There's two results that we can use here, the shoreline and the tidally coordinated shoreline. This is from the LIDAR study, and this would be the better data set for our purpose. If you choose tidally coordinated shoreline, you'll see a zip file to download right here. If you pick the other shoreline, you'll open up a web map showing the shoreline. For this one, pick export in the right-hand corner of the map, and in the export panel, you'll see a list of formats that you can download the data. Pick the original format. This will be a shapefile 
in a zip archive, and this will be in the North American Datum of 1983, New York, Long Island, State Plain Feet and Survey Feet. So this is the right data set. These others will be reprojected to um, WGS84. So pick the original if you didn't pick the tidally coordinated shoreline. Download either data set and unzip it. I'm going to start grass. And we'll create a new location based on the data we've downloaded. So we set our grass GIS database directory. We browse to it. and select or create a folder called grass data. In here, I'm going to create a new location. I'll call this NYC. And then it asks us how we want to create the new location. I'm going to create it by reading the projection and datum terms from a georeference data file. The TIFFs we downloaded have georeferencing data with them. That's why we call them GeoTIFFs. So I'm going to hit Next, and I'm going to browse for the data we downloaded. Here is the Bare Earth, New York City, Tile 20, TIFF. So I'll select that. Or I can select the shoreline. I'm going to select the shoreline instead. Here we see the shoreline shapefile. I'll select that. Next, and finish. It will ask if you want to import the shoreline shapefile into the new location. I'm going to say yes. And then just make sure I have New York City location selected, the permanent map set, and I'll start grass. Start a new grass session, and I'm going to add the vector map that I imported, the shoreline. Add a raster, a vector data set here, add vector map, and there's the shoreline. This is the shoreline for all of New York City. I'm only interested in Governor's Island here in the middle. There's two ways that we can select this. But first, let's check the projection information on this. There's two ways I can do this. I can go to the console, I can type g.proj for g.projection, dash p for print, and hit enter. Or I can go to settings, map projections, display map projection. This tells me that I'm in the North American datum of 1983, New York, Long Island, and I'm in U.S. Surveyor's Feet. The EPSG code here is a good reference for finding your coordinate reference system or setting it. All right, so now we want to extract the shoreline of Governor's Island from this New York City shoreline. One simple way we can do it is use the Extract Vector Features tool here. It's in the top left of the map display window. It looks like a highlighted rectangle. It's going to pop up a Select Features dialog, and I want to click on the shoreline of Governor's Island here.
Make sure you don't lose the Select Features window and hit Create New Map. This will create a new layer with a selection for just the Governor's Island shoreline. Another way to do this is with the command v.extract. That's under Vector, Feature Selection, Select by Attributes, v.extract. The name of the input vector map will be Shoreline, NYC 2017 LiDAR Low Tide Shoreline. The second tab, Selection, I want to pick a value for this. To find a value to select this with, I'm going to first use the Query tool here and click on the boundary of Governor's Island. Make sure you have the shoreline selected. This will tell me the attribute data for this geometry. Expand the attribute tab and I can see this is category 184. In v.extract, I'm going to set the category value to 184. I could also write an SQL statement saying something like Cats for uh, cat for category equals 184, and 184 would be in single quotes. So I could use either the where statement or the category value, and I'm ready to run this. Oh, the output name in the required tab will be shoreline simpler name. Now run and it will have extracted the shoreline for New York City, uh, for Governor's Island. Now we'll zoom to our shoreline, right click on the shoreline map and go zoom to selected map. Next we want to set our computational region for raster processing. Right click on the shoreline and set the computational region from this map. We would also like to set a raster mask. Setting the computational region is going to limit all raster operations to the bounding box around this vector. If we want to mask everything to the vector, then we need to set a mask. We can do this under the raster menu, r.mask. We're going to go to the second tab vector and set a vector mask. We'll set this to shoreline and run. Now we're ready to import the digital surface model and digital elevation model. We'll go to file, import raster data, import common raster formats, RNG doll. GDAL is the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library, and it handles all the different data types you can bring into GIS. Let's browse and find our digital elevation model first. This is under um, BE, Bare Earth, New York City, Tile 20, GeoTIFF. I'm going to set an output name next. I'll call this Elevation 2017, and I'm ready to run the command. I may go to the Region tab and limit the import to the current region with the flag R and run this. Rather than running the command, closing this and picking it from the menu again, I'm going to go back to the Required tab, and I'm going to set the digital, digital surface model next. So I'll select my highest hit, New York City, Tile 20 GeoTIFF here. 
and I'll set the name for the output map to surface 2017. I still have limit the import to the current region set, and I'm going to run this and import the digital surface model. So here I have my digital elevation model and my digital surface model that has the trees and the buildings. The color table for this doesn't show a lot of values. So what we would like to do is stretch the color table. I'm going to right click and set the color table. The command is r.colors. I have the name of the raster map set here under map. In the second tab, define, I can set the color table. I could, right now it's set to the default, Veritas. It's a great color table, perceptually uniform and good for color blindness. What I want to do is set histogram equalization. This will stretch the values to give us higher contrast. This is just in the visualization in the color table. Now I can clearly see low ground, high points on the ground, and where all the trees and buildings are. I could change the color table here also to, for example, elevation with histogram equalization set. Now let's run this for the digital elevation model, the map elevation 2017. I'll leave these settings here and just change the name of the map in the map tab. And now I have a good stretch for the elevation color table on here. You can explore the different color tables and set the map that you like. Haxby could be another good choice. To finish today, we will add a legend. Under Map Elements, go to Add Raster Legend, and pick a raster map. Pick here, Surface 2017. And optionally, go to Fonts, and select a font that you like. I've installed a free open source font called Leto. I highly recommend. So I'll set that. You'll have to download and install it first, of course. And then hit OK. Your legend will appear here. If you want to edit it, you can double click on it again to bring back the d.legend menu. We may want to go to the subset tab and set a custom range. I'll make this go from the lowest value, minus 8, comma, to the max value, and I'll set that to maybe 150. Apply. And that will cut off some of the values on the top of my legend. We can move this by left-clicking, moving it. To resize it, I can right-click and go to Resize Legend. As a note, you can also remove the legend by right-clicking on it. As a note, you can also control the position of the legend and its size in the uh, optional tab with the coordinates. Finally, you can save the map here with Save Display to File. For the next sessions, you can download a whole grass data set prepared for the Governor's Island um, as a grass GIS data set on my website under data. There's the Governor's Island data set for grass GIS that contains the time series of imagery, digital elevation model, digital surface model, and vector maps.